If you're designing websites, you have to know what accessibility for websites means. And over the last year, lawsuits over websites which are not accessible has been on the rise. So actually, legally, if you're a designer, you need to know what accessibility means. On this video, we're going to cover what accessibility means and how you can make sure that the website you design are accessible. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, what's up? My name is Ron Segal. I'm a freelance designer. And today we're going to be talking about accessibility when designing for the web. Now accessibility, I want to explain what it is, but it's actually something that I wasn't really not aware of, but it wasn't top of mind kind of up until the last two years when it started to really rise in, in importance and people started paying attention to it. And as I've said in the intro, legislatively, like there were some new laws and there has been a, a rise in people who are actually suing website owners for not being um, accessible. So designers really need to understand what it is. So basically let's cover what it is. The, the basic core concept is that not everybody has the same you know, some people have disabilities, it might be that they're not be able to see at all or have some kind of visual impurities, um, meaning they can't see color well, they can't see, you know, as good as some other people, or maybe they can't, um, you know, they have some other disabilities, so they maybe they're operating their, their um, computer and browsing through voice and through other uh, tools. And so we need to make sure that those people will be able to browse the web as well, and it's it's kind of kind of a basic right to be able to browse the laws these days. So there's basically two aspects to it. One of them is how the website looks, uh, meaning that they'll be able to see and read it properly. The other aspect of it is how the website is developed, developing it correctly, um, meaning that they'll be able to use some of the features like voice activation and stuff like that. And as designers who are basically managing the project and obviously designing the visuals, but also a lot of times making sure that the development um, correlates to, or we're actually managing the development, at least, you know, when I'm working and I'm actually building the website using Webflow or, you know, managing developers, I have the responsibility of explaining to them what they need to do to make sure that the website is good and accessible. So let's get down to it. Um, basically, I got into or really learned more about the concept from this article from Pablo Stanley from about a year and so ago. Um, and I'll link to the article below. He really covered kind of the core aspects or key concepts in accessibility in a really fun Pablo Stanley way. So make sure to um, check the article. I'll cover some of the, the concept that he mentioned. I'll drill down on, on some of them to make sure that you'll be able to implement it when you're designing for the web. So let's talk about kind of like the key, key concept. And by the way, Pablo mentioned in this, um, article that there is a Chrome extension that you can uh, install and that Chrome extension will uh, show you if your website is already developed what's what's wrong and broken because there is what's called the WCAG which is the web content accessibility guidelines it's kind of a, a bunch of people who decide what are they what means um, that a website is uh, accessible what has to happen and there's actually some rankings like A double A and triple A which means how good or how accessible your website is. So I'm not going to drill down to every tiny law here. I just want to cover the, the basic concept with you. Um, but the, the, the Chrome extension that I've men, uh, mentioned does go in depth and, and tells you, oh, this font is a little bit too small um, and, and stuff like that. So you might want to check out, I'll, it'll be in the description as well. Um, check it out and it'll help you. But let's get started with the main concept before you even have a website that's designed and developed. So the, the first concept is color, contrast, and text size. And the idea here is that, as I said, some people, maybe old people, or maybe people that have some visual impurities, can't see as good. And maybe, you know, we're designers, we usually work maybe on a Mac or on a fancy, um, on a fancy display that shows color really, really nice. And so we like to create higher keys with, like, let's say some kind of a shade of gray or something. But for people who can't see super, super well, or have an amazing display, like we have, um, that makes reading really, really tough job, sometimes to the point of impossible. 
the same size, the same thing goes for text size. We as designers, we like to make things fancy and leave a lot of kind of like white space and stuff like that by using tiny fonts. But we have to consider that for a lot of people using these type of super small fonts makes it hard to impossible to read. So just like that in packaging design, when, when somebody's uh, you know designing a medication and they put this tiny little paper, there's actually laws that says the font size can't be uh, lower than something because people, all people need to be able to read this. The same thing goes with website guidelines. Your font can't be below some some combination of color and size to make sure that it will be um, seen. Now, um, Matt MDS, my friend, has actually created this really awesome tool for Mac, which, um, you know, you can check the samples uh, of your fonts and, and color uh, contrast, um, even in your sketch or whatever design tool that you're using. And this will actually tell you while you're designing if you have enough contrast going on. And as you can see from the screenshot, it gives you kind of the your your rank. Is it A, double A, triple A, which is like the best of the best um, accessibility rate. You need to have some kind of a high contrast Again, enough for people to see. So check out MDS's um, contrast. Might be a good tool for you to use. Now, one more thing that you should, when you're designing, take in mind is that you don't want to use color alone to make kind of difference differentiations, right? Because some people are color blind and they might not see the difference. So let me give you an example. So let's say here, if you look at the right, we have two types of card and one of them is labeled with a yellow and one of them is labeled with an orange. But somebody that has color blindness might not actually see that they are different. And if you're, imagine that you're designing some kind of maybe a task management or, or something like that and you want to show a status of a project, if you're going to be only relying on color, then somebody that's looking at it might not even see that there is a difference or urgency or something like that. So make sure that when you're designing, you add something else to this besides color. For example, if you look at the example on the right, I've added, for example, team A and team B. So it's not only relying on color. Obviously, for those of us who can see well, we're going to be able to make decisions or understand very quickly because of the help of color. But color is not the only way that's going to help us understand what's going on here. All right. So one more thing that you should care about is focus states. So we as designers, obviously, we like to focus a lot on hover states and you know what happens when uh, people move and hover with the mouse over something, create fancy interactions. But we a lot of times forget about the focus state. So focus states basically is for people who use the keyboard to navigate websites and stuff like that. So they might click the tab and then they kind of the the selected link is going to be somehow um, selected, right? And we need to show how that looks like. So this state is called focus state, and a lot of designers don't even bother designing it uh, or telling the developers that they should implement this because, again, this is not something that's visible or used by them, and and so they forget about it. So make sure that you also design for the focus state for people who are using tab to select and then navigate through the website. All right, one more thing is labels. So these days, a lot of kind of trendy or this kind of design that you might see on Dribbble or stuff like that when people are designing forms, it's very kind of minimalistic, right? So it's like the example on the left, they're not even using a label for the form. And by label is what you see on the right when you have kind of a text that is above the, the form field. So a lot of times people would just use what's called the placeholder text inside the label to um, specify what this label is for. So Again, like the example on the left, you can see that the full name is actually not a label. It's what's called a placeholder text. Now, the problem with this is, as I've mentioned, some people use um, tools that read the, the websites to them. And when there is no label, they're not going to be able to know what this form field is just because the, the website readers actually read the labels of the form. So you m have to have kind of a label for the form just build it this way. Otherwise, they won't be able to know what this form is for and won't be able to fill it up. All right. Next thing is alt tabs. Now, alt tabs is basically when you design some kind of a website and there's a code that says, for example, show this image. An alt tag is a, a, a 
piece of the code, some letters inside the code that actually explains what this image is. So again, as you can see in this example, here we have ALT, by the way, ALT stands for alternative. So if you can not see it and a machine is going to read the website to you, for this image, it's going to say Nike Air Zoom so that you can understand if you can't see what's on the website, what's in there. Now, again, this is part of the development process, not you, when you design, when you're working in Sketch, alt tags is meaningless. But when you're making the transition from your sketch files into Webflow or working with a developer or whatever, the way that you're building the, your website, you must have a system for putting these alt tags in place. You also, if you know, if you're going to hand over the website to your client, you have to educate them about alt tags and how whenever they, let's say, um, put in a new blog post or update content in their website, they should be using alt tag to make sure that their website um, is accessible, right? So this kind of leads into how to make sure that the website is developed correctly. And it, it has to do with things like how to set up the correct markup, which means let's say that the code um, is, is uh, written correctly so that they would know what an article is, what a navigation is, what a footer is, and how to make sure that, you know, the website will be uh, navigatable with keyboard. And this gets a little bit technical, but again, it's not yours. If you're a designer and you're not developing yourself the website, obviously it's not your responsibility, but you have to educate or you have to make sure that the developer developer that you're working with will do a good job by developing the website correctly. Now, as I've mentioned in the beginning of the web uh, of, of the video, now it's kind of like a little bit of scary in terms of lawsuit, like is my is my website, you know, lawsuit safe. Um, and some clients are afraid of that. And because you know, we are at the end of the day, we're designers, we the law and if you're trying to read everything that's in the, you know, uh, web content accessibility guidelines, you might not understand everything, you might not be able to implement everything. So if your clients care about not being sued for, you know, <laughs> accessibility issues, you want to make sure 100% that, you know, that, that you're safe. So in that case, I personally don't know everything that there is to know and but there is a solution. So this is a company, AccessCB is a company, actually I know these guys are based here in Israel and I've met them a few times and they've built basically a product which by just entering one line of code into your website, it takes care of basically two things. First of all, it kind of uses AI to put in all the alt tags and change the markup to make sure that the development is developed according to the standard, that's one thing. And then on the visual side, it kind of adds a little, if you want a little pop-up that can give you this kind of options to increase text size, contrast and stuff like that. So you don't have to, uh, and in some, in some countries, except for example, in Israel, it is um, legally binding actually to put these kind of pop-ups in every website to make sure that people who want to make the web, uh, the font bigger or more contrast or see the black, the website just black and white um, can do that using some kind of a menu. So this tool actually helps you um, implement that inside the, you know, inside the tool. Now I have to be super, super honest. They are my friends, as I said, I never used actually their product in any of the website that I've built. This is not kind of a sponsored video. They did not ask me to do this. Um, so I'm just like, I've recommended this product to a lot of my students in the Webflow Masterclass who were looking for a solution for making sure that their website are accessible. And I've heard great things about this. Again, I'd never used it personally, so I can only say that it looks great. It looks like a great solution. I've heard good things from my students. But, um, you know, it's just, um, I'm just showing you that it's a solution if you're looking for it and just, just to make sure that you're legally covered. So I want to give you some final thoughts and be like super honest and open about this. Look, I have to admit that not every website that I've designed um, has been like 100% fully like legal proof and, and super accessible. Um, this is something that's just, I feel like in the last two years have been gaining traction and m shifting the mindset of designers. 
So I know I'm not like perfect in that sense. I'm trying to be better with every website that I'm designing. And also in terms of kind of like the, the legal, like, are you scared? Like every website has to do this. I think it really depends on who your client is. I think that when you're kicking off a project with your client and you're getting to know them, you have to ask and you have to make sure, and it really depends on who their audience is and so forth how important is accessibility for you as a client, right? You as a, as a designer, you have to have the responsibility to educate them, to tell them what are the legal requirements. But again, you're not a lawyer, so you can't like fully, just like you have to tell them, put a privacy policy, but you don't really, you can't write the privacy policy for them. I feel it's the same with, you know, accessibility. You have to tell them it's a thing. You have to tell them what the options are. Like you can say, from my end, I'm going to make sure that there's going to be enough contrast and everything. If you're taking care of development, you're responsible for making sure that it's developed correctly. We can use this plugin or we cannot use this plugin. It's your, you know, you're the client, you make the final decision. Um, so just understand the context, uh, educate your clients and then make the right decisions. And I think that as the years go by, website will be better more accessible. Um, and it's thanks to me and you if we'll do a better job as designers. All right, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. Um, make sure you're subscribed and lots more awesome videos coming up on web design, design in general, freelance life. And uh, yeah, see you on the next video.